Good morning and welcome to Lillybrook. So this is the day after the first round of golf after lockdown. It's four degrees centigrade and it's raining. I was supposed to be in a four ball but the other three guys haven't turned up and who can blame them really. Right, I've got a two ball in front, I got a three ball behind. So I've got a little space in the middle. So today I'm going to be uh, doing some short game and I'm going to exchange more of what's going on in here rather than me just chipping four or five balls and doing a voiceover. I'll talk to you about it as we do it. Now I'm going to start on the fourth just to try and get a gap from the three ball behind me. And uh, the first chip and run is for a chap in the northeast of Thailand. His wife has just started playing golf and she's looking for some help for 30, 40, 50 yarders when you're short of the green. So I'm going to show you something that's uh, a pretty safe bet for beginners if there's nothing between you and the green. And remember, we're not trying to knock it to two feet when we're a beginner. We just want to find the green. So when we get down to the fourth, um, we'll start there. Right, we're down in front of four. I've given myself 45 yards to the middle of the green. Now as a beginner, or especially a lady beginner, Controlling a sandwich shot is quite difficult. Controlling the length of the swing and the speed of the swing and you end up with fats and thins. So we need a club to get rid of that. I'm going to take the seven iron. What I'm going to do is I'm going to stand open to my target. I'm going to get this left hip out of the way so I can swing down the line. I'm going to move the ball back in the stance a bit. That means I collect the ball first. Now the interesting thing is, if you take a big sandwich swing and you knife it, it's way through the back of the green. If you thin a short seven iron swing, it doesn't do you any harm. But we move the ball back a bit, so we get it first and we try and get rid of the fat. And to be honest, because we've got a straight face club, even the fat doesn't hurt us too much. Uh, there's nothing in my way, so uh, I've got nothing to go over. So I'm gonna treat this as a long putt. If you can think in terms of a putt, I think you'll do quite a bit better than trying to fly it through the air. So let's give one a go. I'm just making sure that the group behind haven't caught me up yet. Well, I've knocked that to three feet and that was a tiny bit thin a little bit of the leading edge there or the bottom groove so it shows that hitting it thin doesn't hurt you with a seven iron if I've been trying to fly this through the air 45 yards with my sandwich and I'd knifed it well we'd be waving at the flag as we went past yeah, I'm quite pleased with that I went to three feet now as we get closer to the green we can think about actually landing on the green as opposed to running it through the uh, fairway here. So now I'm well, about eight or nine yards short of the green. Now I've got the nine iron, so, but I'm still gonna play the same shot. It's going to be a putting kind of stroke. And I'm gonna think in here that this is a long putt, not a flying the ball through the air. So uh, we'll see how we get on with a nine iron. Now I don't mind admitting that that one was a little fat but because the ball's back in my stance the 9-iron is a little de-lofted so it behaves more like a straight face club so I've hit the ball forwards now if I did that with a 60 degree and I know some people 
love their 60 degree. If I'd done that with a 60 degree, the ball would be just on the front of the green. It would, wouldn't be up there three feet from the flag. So as a beginner, and especially as a lady, if there's nothing between you and the flag, think in terms of a long putt, a long chip and run with less loft. You'll be more successful than pulling out your 60 or your sand wedge. Well, I better try and make a par with uh, my proper golf ball and see you for the next problem. Well, you've just missed a, uh, a glorious birdie on five. On oh, six, I've mucked up. I've come up about, about 18, 20 yards short of the green and the flag's on about another 20. So I've got about 40 yards here, but it's rough and it's wet rough. Especially, you know, it's raining and it's horrid. I got a bad lie as well. So now I've got to think about what loft do I need to land this ball on the green? I'm going to go with the sand wedge. Although it's uphill, so I could use the pitching wedge. I'll tell you what, let's use the pitching wedge. We'll find out if I can land this on the green, run it up to the hole. Yeah, so I did the first part okay, I've landed it on the green, but it's uh, it's run an uncomfortable distance past, so didn't quite work it out right. Perhaps I could have used the gap wedge, that would give me a bit more height and a little less roll. So when you've got shots like this, you've got to imagine the shot in your mind. How far am I going to carry this? How far will it roll with the, the loft that I've got in my hand? That time I got it wrong, but uh, at least I'm not short. At least I haven't taken too much loft and fatted it and just come up short of the green still in the wet rough. So, you know, marks out of 10, I'll give that a, I'll give that a six. Well, I need to hold that for my score. Right, we've made it to the eighth. Now there's a hollow by the side, the right-hand side of the eighth. And it's very awkward if you get stuck in there. One of my playing partners yesterday was in here whilst in front of us. And ooh, what's that? He, he played a reasonable shot out, left himself under the hole. But one thing he said afterwards was, uh, I wish I'd walked that shot. I didn't realize I had so much room. Because sometimes when you're 20, 25 yards away, you don't actually get the feel for the shot. So uh, let's walk the shot. So here's the hollow, and you come over this lump in the green. Pretty thick rough here, so if you come up short, it's gonna stop. Then you need to look at the slopes around the green. What's gonna happen when I play my shot? Now he finished up down here, about 12 feet shy of the hole, but he said he wished he'd uh, walk the shot and thrown it further. So uh, let's see if I can play the shot any better now that I've looked at it. Well, I only improved on my playing partner yesterday by about four feet, but four feet is four feet. I've got the much better chance of, of the par had I missed my third shot to the right in that hollow. So if you need to take a walk and have a look at your shot and pick a landing spot, then do so. Well, I'm on the ninth now, for the second day running. I've put it in the greenside bunker, 
which is silly when you consider how much space is over there. Well, the, the first time I did it yesterday, I hit five iron and it was the mud ball that hit the big slice into this bunker. Today, I knifed my six iron from the middle of the fairway. Now, these bunkers are very wet. Now, normally we would open up the club face quite a bit, but with the wet sand, the bounce has a chance of knifing into the back of the ball. And yesterday, as you saw, I only just got it out and I got it all wrong. So today I'm, I'm going to open the face a little bit, but not as much as for a dry bunker. Now, we can't practice our swing in the bunker, but we can practice our swing outside the bunker. So find yourself a thick bit of rough near the bunker, something that will give some resistance to the club head, and have a few practice swings out of the bunker. And I'm not going to do that for you now because the, the game behind might be pressing. So I'm just going to get on with it and play the bunker shot from a wet bunker. And don't forget to get your feet as deep in the sand as you can because with a wet bunker your feet won't go in as much as normal. Let's see if I can play this and make a par this time instead of the bogey yesterday. Although being stroke three, a bogey isn't a bad thing. And this one's about 22 yards. So there you have the danger. The bounce there has stopped the club going under the ball as much as I want to, and I'm at least 35 feet past the flag. So it's a good job, it's a good green. Now this is why I aim away from bunkers. I'm not that good in them, you know? So I always try and play away from a bunker. You know, if I've got a, a seven iron into the green, I'm not so much looking where the flag is, I'm looking where's the damn bunkers because I don't want to go in them and so uh, I'll play 15 feet left of a flag or right of a flag just to make sure I don't go in the damn bunker well I don't think I'm going to get a par but uh, let's make sure the two putt and then we'll uh, we'll move on to the 10th and do something different right number 10 just hit my approach shot onto the green this is a three-tiered green now the flag's usually in the middle tier, They're usually friendly, but they do stick it elsewhere just to be awkward. So I'm going to go down short of the green. So how are we going to get the ball? Sorry about this, I'm rushing a bit. How are we going to get the ball up to the middle tier? Now we could try flying it all the way with the sand wedge but I would recommend rolling it. Now, the club that you use is going to be trial and error. You know, you're going to try and find out what club will get me onto that middle tier. Now, if I use a wedge or a nine iron and land it short of the tier, chances are it's going to stop. And I know from experience in the summer, it's just going to roll back towards me. So I need to roll it up there. So. I got a seven iron, so let's see how I get on with this. Let's move over so I don't want to hit my own ball. So I'm going to read it like a putt. Um, I want to go a couple of feet left of this flag. And I'm just going to try and roll it up with the seven iron. Well, I hit the rope. I didn't hit it particularly well, but um, it's on the right level. It's about, what, nine or 10 feet 
right of the flag. I've got an uphill right to left putt. What could be perfect? More perfect than that? See, there it is. It's not that particularly close. I didn't hit it very well. But it's up here. If I'd used a sand wedge, I could have quite easily made a mess of that, couldn't I? Right then, I'm on the 12th now. I'm going to try and replay the shot I played yesterday. If you remember, I was short of the green, the flag's on the back shelf, and I tried to throw a sand wedge all the way and knifed it through the back. And I was lucky to make a bogey. So how about this time, I take a club that's got enough loft to clear the bank in front of me and make it onto the green, but it's got less loft than the sand wedge to roll up the green. Let's see if I can get to a back flag by rolling it up. I'm going to try a 9-9. And if it doesn't roll all the way up to the, uh, to the flag, it doesn't really matter that much. Now how much better is that than trying to fly it all the way with a sand wedge? I had a little uh, hooky on it because I closed the face. That little bit of hooky will help it run up the green. So I've got a chance of a par now. If it's not close enough for the par, I take my bogey. And it's not over the back where I'm probably going to make a double. Although, as you said yesterday, I got away with murder. Right, now I need to go and play my actual ball. So there it is. I've run it up the step. It's what, six or seven feet short. Fortunately, that's the ball I'm scoring with today and that is nearly uh, 18 feet short. Right, I'm on 13 now. If you remember yesterday, I hit a very good three wood. In fact, it went further than I thought it would. Came over the brow over here and ran all the way down here. It left myself about 45 yards. Now I haven't been practicing my pitching. It's the first day back from lockdown. Why on earth did I pull a sand wedge and try and take on this back flag over this bunker? And if you remember, I knifed it and I actually hit this bush beyond the green and shot down to the right. And I took a bogey in the end. What the hell is wrong with over here? I mean, what was I thinking? You know, I can hit it over here, I can two putt and get a par. And since when did a par hurt you? Trouble is, when you're playing poorly, is you make poor decisions. Then you play worse, and then you make worse decisions, and it's a snowball going downhill. So this time I'm going to try and play it um, properly. This is an uphill slope. Then it banks around to the right. The whole green slopes to the right. So everything is here to push the ball towards the flag. So let's have a go at that. Well, I've decided on the eight iron. I think I want some loft rather than running this along the ground. The ball I'm playing, as you can see, is just on the front of the green. So I want to land it around there. Don't think you can see that. I landed it just short of my ball. It went all the way up to the back of the green. Let's zoom in. So it's gone all the way up to the back of the green here, and then it's slung it round to the right. I can't tell from here, but it's uh, 10, 12 feet away. Why the hell didn't I do that yesterday? So just in case the zoom was not very good, 
the ball's come across the green. It's come up this steep bank here, and then it's swung round, and I've finished up. What do you say that is? Three, six, nine, ten, maybe eleven. So you can always learn something. You know, even I learn something. Everybody learns something when they play golf. So, uh, I know what I'm doing in the future. If I hit my tee ball too far and it runs all the way down behind this uh, greenside bunker. Tell you what, I'm gagging for a drink. I'm steaming up, my glasses are steaming up because I'm getting a bit warm, despite it being only four or five degrees. But I think it was Alan who asked, how do you get out of heavy rough? Well, I'm gonna try now, and try being the operative word. You know, I try and steer clear away from this because it's damn difficult. So the first thing is, that flag doesn't matter a damn. What we're aiming at is that big, big flat green thing out there, get it on the green. Now what I'm going to use is a sand wedge and I'm going to open the face. I want a bit more bounce. Plus I've got a guard against. When you go into the rough, the, uh, the grass gets tangled around the hosel and it closes the face. So I open the face first to help me get it out, get it up from a, from a very deep lie. And secondly, to guard against the uh, club face going shut. Now you've got to take a big swing at this and you've got to attempt a follow through. Don't stab at it. I mean the club may come to a halt all by itself because of the thickness of the grass but you've got to attempt a follow through. You... Let me step up here. Oh Christ. I tell you what I haven't been in here for a very very long time. Where are we going to go? Right. Here's the ball. We get what we get. Yeah, it's fair to say that that is down. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to open this club face. I'm going to go at it hard. I'm going to grip the club tighter again to stop the club face from closing. Wish me luck. See if I can find somewhere to put you. There we go. So you, you can't see the ball. In fact, I can't see the ball. But there's the green. Let's see if I can hit one. Well, that came out quite well, so well in fact it's, uh, it's across the green, but at least it's on the green. If we duffed it then we were playing that same shot again. The only danger is, is if the ball sits up in this stuff, if you've got six inches of air below the ball, 
So what I do there is I use a square club face and I hover the club. I go down the shaft a bit and I hover the club just to make sure that I hit the ball and not go completely under it. I'll tell you what, you wouldn't want to be here in the summer because it is quite deep up here. So uh, good luck if you get in it, but make a good swing at it. And as I say, even if the club head does grind to a halt, you should be attempting to make a follow through. Right, I got five feet for birdie on my own card. Let's see if I can do that. I am on 17 now and I'm going to recreate a shot for you that I had in a previous video. And that's where I've hit the 4-iron down the left hand side of the two bunkers. It's bounced and it's run in. And it's finished up right on the edge. Now on the day, the flag was back here, way across the green. And what I've got here is a downslope before it runs back up. So my plan was, was, was to just chip it over the bunker, land on this downslope and get the kick forward. So what I did was I got the sand wedge and I actually closed the face a bit for a change just to get that uh, lower ball flight and to take off some bounce. Now, I suppose you could use a, lo uh, a gap wedge, I almost said lob wedge, then. use a gap wedge because that's got less bounce than a sand wedge. But I fancied the sand wedge. Now the other thing is to keep the swing short. The shorter the swing is, the more control you have over this club head, the more likely is you're going to hit this ball properly with the face of the club rather than knife it or chuff it. And the final bit, if I can remember because I'm getting old, the fi my final th swing thought was stand still. Let's see if I can do it again. I mean, it's not a pretty uh, swing at all. It's not a pretty shot, but it's a calculated, work out the angles kind of shot. And I've done better the second time, but uh, they've been trimming the edge of the bunker, so there was a little less grass there. But you can see what I mean. I've kept the, the swing very short, just to make sure that I get this on the golf ball first. Well, I hope you've enjoyed that game behind hasn't caught me up yet so uh, I'm not going to delve into any more short game for a while until uh, until somebody asked me to and if you uh, if you really did enjoy this give us a thumbs up and hit subscribe right believe it or not I'm on level par I need to go to the 18th and par that cheerio 63 yards So I'm on a downslope, I've got 63 yards, the ball is above my feet, it's all downhill, flags at the back. 
So I've taken the old man's 8 iron chip and run, hit it quite firmly as you saw, and I'm uh, 7 feet away. Now if you want to use a sand wedge or a lob wedge here and you think you can get closer than 7 feet, be my guest, but I'll stick with the old man's chip and run. Alright, so it's 10 feet. Well, that's that. Another missed birdie. But I got four other birdies today. What a difference it makes. So I've had the correct height tee pegs. I've aimed properly. And I haven't thought one minute, one minute, one second, one swing. I haven't thought about my hips today. And I've just played golf. And that was a level par 69, which is stupid for your second round back after lockdown. But I'm going to keep doing the stretching exercises. I'm going to keep trying to turn my hips. But when I'm on the golf course, target, not swing mechanics. All right then, cheerio. Yeah.